let's begin. Okay, so we are um, we are in the midst of the story of Rechavam. Rechavam was the son of King Shlaima, Shlaima HaMelech, and uh, he's taking over at the age of 41, and he's taking over the uh, the reigns of uh, of being Melech, of being king, and what's going on is that the the people they've already almost made their mind up that they don't like the way things are going uh, or they have made their mind up they don't like the way things are going and their big issue is that Shlomo lived a very lavish lifestyle and everyone had to pay for that. Sure. It came out of taxes. All of their tax money was to pay for him eating his steaks and uh, much more expensive things than steaks. And uh, people were, you know, had this negative feeling towards it. Now, Rechavam, who's this uh, who's the son of Shlema? He's uh, he goes to Shem, and in Shem is where they're going to make him king. In the meantime, Yeravam, who was already uh, given pro- told prophecy from the prophet, he was told that he's going to be the king of the other tribes, the northern kingdom, the ten tribes, the tribes of Israel. Achia Hashilaini was the prophet. And so uh, the story of Yerub is in the midst, in the middle of he, in Egypt at this point, because he had uh, escaped over there when he started up with Shlema HaMelech. And so we have a angry people and words to have gone out that Yeravam was chosen by Achia Hashiloini. So people seem to know about, at least the Radak brings this insight. He says people seem to have known, and that's why they're doing this anointing of Rechavam in Shechem. They're uh, doing this, so to speak, separately. Uh, they, you know, they wanted him to come to their area. And um, Yeravam is from that area, from Ephraim. And uh, they invited uh, Yeravam to come to Israel, uh, come back at this point. And uh, he chose to come to, and he came to Shem to the ceremony. And what uh, what what actually is um, is happening here is that Yeravam is going to ultimately be chosen as the king, and Hashem is going to put in front of Rechavam a stumbling block, an area where he is going to make a mistake and ultimately lose everyone. And uh, let's read it inside. Uh, I believe he started chapter two, or somewhere in the beginning, around, uh, around verse uh, seven. So Rechavam tells the uh, people, they ask him, are you planning on following? father's footsteps of giving us huge amounts of taxes because your father made our oak uh, very heavy and uh, if you alleviate it, we will serve you. So they almost like threatened Rechavam. And I'm sure he was put in a position that he didn't expect to be put in because He's the king, and they should not be treating him this way. But what the what they're really doing is implying to him, like you're not automatically king. We're going to choose you if we want. 
And that's why they make this this almost like threat to him. Like if you're not going to lower taxes, we'll just go to go, you know, we'll just hire someone else. We'll we'll leave. Now, um, he said to them, I need three. Rechavam took advice from the elders and they said, and that's verse seven, they spoke to him saying, if today you become a servant to this people and serve them favorable and speak kind words to them, they will be your servants all the days. So the elders gave Rechavam good advice. And that is that you should humble yourself now and then they will follow you as king. And uh, this would have been very smart for Rechavam to do. But uh, verse 8 is, but he ignored the advice of the elders who had counseled him and he took counsel from the youth who had grown up with him who ministered before him. Now, if you look in the Hebrew, it says, es hayaladim, the children. Now, how old is Rechava at this point? 41. So what does it mean he's asking advice from the children? It is that their advice is childish. He's asking advice from these from the children that grew up with him. Okay, I understand they're friends, but he's they're 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 not fully mature. And uh, it's using this concept of uh asking advice from people who he grew up with. The the idea, the concept is asking advice from people who are automatically going to say yes, 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 agree with him. And that's not the way it's to be, if you want true advice, you need to choose an advisor who's willing to debate you, who's willing to, to who has the ability to say something that you won't like, because that's true advice. If you just want someone who's going to um, say yes, then that's honest advice. And therefore, uh, it's calling them the youth who he uh, grew up with, uh, before him. These are people who are simply his friends who are not giving him what's correct. They're just saying yes. They're not even thinking about it, maybe. Now, whose advice does Rechavam listen to? So uh, he ignored the advice. He counseled with these young people. He said to them, what do you advise? Look at verse 9. He said to them, what do you advise? What, what word shall we respond to this people who have spoken to me, saying, alleviate the yoke that your father placed upon us? The way he says it, you almost hear from him what he wants them to say. Because the way he words it is from these, what shall word shall we respond to this people who have spoken to me with this in this way, this chutzpah, you know, it's sort of like that's the way to imply. Like obviously, they need a good, uh, 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 you know, uh, they need to be put in shape, you know. And uh, verse ten is the young men who had up with him spoke to him, saying, "This is what you shall see to this." who have spoken to you, saying, your father made heavy, you alleviate it for us. This is what you should say to me. My little finger is thicker than my father's loins. So now my father saddled you with a heavy yoke. I shall add to your yoke. My father chastised you with sticks. I shall chastise you with scorpions. So this is a, uh, uh, a, 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 a interesting uh, way of answering the people, uh, coming on very strong and um, telling them exactly what they don't want to hear. 
and shocking them. Now, the only problem is that Rehavim seems like he didn't realize what's going on over here. The, the, the people are halfway out the door already. And so by him doing this, he's just pushing them a little further out the door and they're, they're fine. They're free. You know, he's not uh, if he would have realized that he almost lost them already in the, the only chance that he might gain them is if he, you know, if he shows them interest in helping the people and the, the being there for the people and doing what's needed, serving the people, if he shows them that, <clears throat> he could have gotten somewhere. But it's almost like they they were already... You're very nice. <laughs> You're very nice. <laughs> Rabbi, could you mute the people, please? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I think everyone's muted now. So, um, sorry about that. Uh, is it clear? Are you hearing me clear, everyone? Is this clear? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, okay, great. So, uh, so, uh, Rechavam, yeah, it seems like he didn't understand, like, where the, where the people are coming from. It's almost like they're looking for him to say this because they're looking to get out, you know, to, 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 to get out of it. So, you know, sometimes he thinks he's, you know, so someone thinks they're, they're, uh, accomplishing some big, big accomplishment by what they're saying. In truth, they were like hoping he'd say this so that they could get it. You know, they could get out of it. It seems like they're like they're looking for some excuse to get out of this situation. So in any event, he gives them this this. He, he tells them exactly what they don't want to hear. Now, the Gemara in Megillah says that if elders tell you to destroy, and the young men tell you to build, you should destroy and not build because the elder's destruction is really building something. In other words, there's some purpose. If they're telling you to destroy, that's an act of building. That's an act of something positive uh, because they know what they're talking about. Elders' destructions, destruction is building. Youngsters' building is really destruction. And a simon ledover, the Gemara says, a sign for this, the Gemara says, is Rechavam ben Shloimai, is Rechavam. That's the sign of this uh, uh, words of wisdom, this uh, axiom is you listen, even if the elders say destroy, that's building. It's almost like they tell you to rip down a building that's uh, that's old and going to uh, gonna fall apart. When they tell you to destroy it, that's actually building because that's going to make a, you're going to be able to build something solid. If you listen to the to the youth who say build, oh, just keep on. You know, keep it up. It's ultimately going to be destruction. It's going to fall apart. You know, so here the elders knew what they were saying, and that's the way it normally is. People don't like to listen, but that's the uh, this is the reality. Okay, so now we're up to uh, now another mistake that they that he made, um, which uh, okay, well we'll see it. We'll read it inside. Yeravam and all the people came to Rechavam on the third day. As the king had spoken, saying, "Return to me on the third day." So now they're coming back to him and say, uh, "Finding out what's so. What's your answer? You, we gave you three. Day, you, you asked for three days to think about this." Which some of the commentaries say was a big mistake, also on Rechavim's part. If you're a leader, you should have an answer right away. Uh, at least uh, there is such a thought in the commentaries. Not ever, not not necessarily does all the commentaries say this, but there is such a thought in the commentaries that this showed a sign of weakness that he didn't have the answer. He told him, oh, let me think about it for a few days. Um, now that's, uh, uh, it's mentioned in the in the commentary, such a thought. Now, um, the uh, they come back to him in three days and uh, the king responded harshly to the people. He ignored the advice of the elders who had counseled him. He spoke to them according to the counsel of the youth 
saying, my father made your, your yoke heavy and I shall add to your yoke. My father chastised you with sticks. I shall chastise you with scorpions. So he basically repeated what they said. The king did not listen to the people for it was the design from Hashem in order to fulfill his word that Hashem had spoken through the hand of Achia Hashiloini to Yeravam, the son of Nevat. So what it says here is that it, it was all orchestrated by Hashem to work out this way because Hashem had already decided to split the kingdom because of Shloimai's sins, which obviously were not complete sins. They're not they weren't sins the way we see them, but they were considered in Hashem's eyes sins, and Hashem decided that the kingdom should be split. And this was all orchestrated by Hashem, that he would make this wrong choice in his words and choosing and advice. And uh, ultimately, um, uh, he made he, he made this decision to follow the advice of the, uh, of the youth, and that was a big mistake. And uh, it was ultimately led to what we'll soon see as the uh, division. Now, there is all, an interesting Gemara in Tractate Shabbos. In Tractate Shabbos, the Gemara mentions that uh, David HaMelech had, at some point, uh, he had suspected one of um, Shaul's uh, grandchildren, Mephibosheth, that he was disloyal to him. Now, this Mephibosheth was lame, and and uh, David was surprised that he didn't come to see him after one of the rebellions. He should have come and showed his support, and he suspected that maybe Mephibosheth was part of one of the rebellions. And some of you may remember this, where. Uh, uh, there was a uh, the um, uh, there was seemed this there was some type of servant by the name of uh, Siva, and David Amelech said, "You will split the you know, the properties between Mephibosheth and Siva. Like like he'll get half the properties because Siva came and showed some type of respect to David, and Mephibosheth." didn't come. Now, the reason Mephibosheth didn't come was because Siva wanted to have, uh, wanted to make up a story uh, uh, to David HaMelech about Mephibosheth is not loyal to you. And that's that's what Siva did. Now, David HaMelech believed him. He believed Lashon Hara. David HaMelech, in, in, at least according to one opinion in the Gemara, he believed this gossip, Lashon Hara's gossip. And uh, ultimately, um, uh, because of uh, this gossip that David HaMelech believed, uh, and he, uh, uh, he, he, it was gossip against Mephibosheth, so it says that uh, uh, the uh, punishment for that was that the, 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 the kingdom will be divided and um, uh, between him and the... Uh, between, in other words, between Judah and the children of Rachel, and uh, and uh, this is what caused Hashem made the dec decree that it will be uh, that it'll be uh, a division here. So it shows us the severity of gossip and how trusting gossip is, believing gossip is a uh, terrible sin and it caused um it caused uh, the the kingdom to be divided now see yeravam comes from yeravam uh, uh, uh comes from ephraim and uh, descendant of uh, rachel and uh, uh the, 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 the yehuda is from david amelach is from yehuda descendant of leah so the kingdom was divided. Now, um, the uh, the pasuk that we're up to 
Yeah, we're in chapter 12, and we're up to verse 16. All of Israel saw the king, that the king did not listen to them. And the people gave their response to the king, saying, What share have we in the house of David? Now, uh, verse 16, when it says, What share have we in the house of David? We have no heritage in the son of Yeshai. Back to your homes, O Israel. Now see to your own house, O kingdom of, da o kingdom of, da o of David. Now, what that meant was, at least Rashi says it means, that the base of Migdash is now yours. What you built, that's for you. Another interpretation here is, that you can rule over your own tribe. Concentrate on your own. Or as the uh, the, the Matsudas David seems to say, you can go to your tent and don't rule over us. You're not a king. You're just uh, you could you could maybe run your household. So that's a another understanding of this. But the point is that the the vast majority of the Jewish people are basically saying we don't want you to be ruling over us. So King Rehavam dispatched Adoram, who was in charge of the tax, and. And um, uh, who was in charge of the tax. And all of Israel pelted him with stones and he died. King Rehavim then hastened to mount his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. And thus Israel rebelled against the house of David to this day. So the... The, the story here, a very sad story, is, you know, that he sent Adoram and uh, uh, I guess to you know, continue bringing in tax and show uh, uh, the way. Well, I, it depends how you, how you want to learn the. Um, uh, according to Rashi, it was the tax collector that that was under Shlomo's uh, taxes, and uh, uh, wanted to show them that he's like uh, going to tax the people and continue taxing the people even more. Uh, but according to the Radak over here, it's uh, uh, he sent a Dairam that uh, maybe uh, they should, uh, uh, you know, make up, uh, return. <laughs> and uh, didn't seem to work. They 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 uh, stoned him to death, and um, and that always you know one of the things you see in the Tanakh was that see there seems to be a very aggressive and uh, style uh, that the people were used to, and I guess that's the way it was in the Wild West, you know, in the. Uh, the way things are in the uh, in, when they're you know in in, in these type of uh, you know in, in places where sort of like you you run your own show to some extent and uh, do things on your on your own vigilante and uh, anyway the uh, the people just pelted him with stones he died and. Uh, uh, Seems very uh, uh, sad that the people were so um, like cruel to him and uh, had to do it in such a violent way. But anyway, this is, seems like this is the way things were. Now, the uh, thus Israel rebelled again. So so um, so they rebelled against um, against Rehavim. 
Now, what, 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 what the end of that verse says is to this day is added over here. It's mentioned here for a reason. Initially, there was a punishment meant to come to Solomon, that his kingdom will ultimately be divided. And this was a uh, part of the plan, but it wasn't meant to be forever. It was meant for 36 years. And this goes takes us back to um, the previous chapter in uh, chapter 11, where, uh, where it mentions over there that it will not happen forever. It will not be forever. I will afflict the descendants of David for this, but not for all time. So the plan was that it would end in these after 36 years. So it was a punishment that they would lose power for 36 years. And OK, that was uh, that was the plan. It ended up not happening that way. Asa sinned and uh, sent money to Aram to help them, uh, protection money. Uh, really, they should have trusted in Hashem. And so ultimately, um, the kingdom of David was not restored. It should have been, but it wasn't because of the sin of Asa at that time. So the the uh, the puzzle here tells us the fact that it ended up uh, to this day it's still divided because they never really came back they never came back to join together now verse 20 King Rehoboam I'm sorry uh, uh, verse 20 it happened when all of Israel heard that Yeruvim had returned And um, and this was also a interesting thing about about uh, Yeruvim returning from Egypt. Because uh, there there seems to be a contradiction of like how exactly he uh, he returned. Was he invited or wasn't he invited? So in the book of Divrei Hayamim, it says that Yeruvim uh, returned from Egypt before being summoned. And, uh, um, but here, in verse 3 in this chapter, it says that they invited him. Vayikroloi. They called him, they invited him. So the answer to this contradiction, at least according to one one way of, of reconciling it, is that the, the, the people asked him to come to Eretz Yisrael. And uh, so he left Egypt, he came to Israel. And once he was there, So they didn't, you know, he returned before being summoned to be chosen as the new king. They, you know, he returned just because they invited him to, the, to, to come back. Um, they asked him to come back because they were planning, uh, they were plotting. But uh, once he was there, they summoned him to come and join them in uh, in uh, um, uh, in confronting uh, Rehavam. Okay, so 
in any event, uh, so he's, uh, so Yerubam is over here. And um, uh, verse 20 again. So it happened when all Israel heard that Yerubam had returned, that they sent and summoned him to the assembly. They made him king over all of Israel. No one followed the house of David except the tribe of Judah alone. So in verse 21 is Rehavim came to Jerusalem and gathered together the entire house of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, 180,000 choice warriors to fight against the house of Israel to return the kingship to Rehavim, the son of Shlema. So here Rehavim realizes that he's got a civil war going on. Well, potential uh, uh uh, he's got a rebellion going on where the people just want to break away. And he decides, let's make a civil war and win. And um, uh, Hashem sent a prophecy to tell him that, no, I, this is all meant. It's meant to happen that there will be a division and don't try to fight it. You lost the opportunity and uh, uh, it's not going to... Uh, it's not going to help. So the word, verse 22, the word of Hashem came to Shmaya, the king of, the, I'm sorry, the man of God. And so meaning Shmaya was the prophet. And, um, The, uh, the, the verse 23, the, the man of God saying, speak to Rehavam, son of Shlema, king of Judah, and to all the house of Judah and Benjamin and to the rest of the people saying, thus says Hashem, do not go up and fight with your brethren, uh, the children of Israel, uh, the children of Israel. Let each man return to his home for this matter was brought about by me. They obeyed the word of Hashem and turned back from going to war in accordance with the word of Hashem. So, they obeyed the word of Hashem and turned back from going to war in accordance with the word of Hashem. So the um, uh, the, the 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 pasuk tells us that Rechavam listened. Not everyone would have. This was a very uh, 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 strong challenge because Yeravam in this situation probably would have fought. Uh, Rechavam had learned from his father. And he followed in his father's footsteps in this sense that uh, got the word of Hashem and he uh, chose to uh, uh, listen to what Hashem said. And um, and uh, he he decided not to fight and just accept accept the situation the way it is. So the, um, the, this is where we see a little issue with what happened to the tribe of Shimon. And I brought it up. Um, I brought it up last, last time we spoke that it does seem surprising what happened to the tribe of Shimon if, um, um, if they lived in the seemingly surrounded by Judah. If so, seemingly Shimon should have been part of this group, which means Rehavam would have the tribe of Yehuda, the tribe of Benjamin, and uh, the people of Shimon. And of course, some Kainim and Leviim that lived in, the, in, in that area as well. Now, um, the Ralbag says that um, many of the Shimonites must have traveled north.
uh, actually, I'm not sure if this is the Ralbag. One of the commentaries says that many of the uh, Shimonites tra traveled north and joined the northern kingdom. And that's why it's called the, the Ten Tribes. Um, and it also says that there were God-fearing people from the Ten Tribes that came to Jerusalem to live near the base of Migdash and bring uh, offerings. So uh, this is actually, let's, oh, let's see if I can pull it up here. There's a Pasuk in Divrei Hayyamim. Let me just pull this up, see if it'll pull up here. And let me just open it. Um, uh, in the book of Chronicles, there's a Pasuk in uh, chapter 11, and the Pasuk says, From all the tribes of Israel, those intent on seeking the Lord, God of Israel, followed them to Jerusalem to sacrifice to the Lord and God, the, the God, the God, of, God of their fathers. They strengthened the kingdom of Judah and supported Rechavim, the son of Shlomai, for three years. For they followed the ways of David and Solomon for three years. Hmm. So some some of the psukim in uh, in um, in the book of Chronicles it adds some of the some inf information what's uh, left out here in the book of Kings. Yeah, let's just take a look again over here. The priests and the Levites from all their territories throughout Israel presented themselves to him. The Levites had left their pasture lands and their holdings had set out for Judah and Jerusalem for Yeruvim and his sons had prevented them from serving the Lord. Having appointed his own priests for the shrines goat demons and calves which he had made from all the tribes of Israel those intent on seeking so yeah so it, it seems like there were um, you know people did travel uh, to the you know to to, uh, to, to be under Rehavam's rule uh, at least for uh, uh, did I lose everyone okay so people seems to have, seem to have traveled to be under uh, Rehavam's rule if they felt that that was the appropriate thing, Baruchni spiritually, and um, and uh, nice that we have uh, uh, mentioned over there that it seems the uh, that Shimonites must have they, maybe they traveled to the uh, to the north or a lot of them, and um, uh, but, so it's not exact. You know what, what it comes out is that it's not exact. It's not that there were only Shim Ruvain. And it was only Yehuda and Benjamin and in the in the, uh, the tribes in the south. Not exactly. There were, you know, there were groups of people as well from other tribes that were there in addition to Kohanim and Leviim and so on. And possibly some people from Shimon probably stayed, you know, even though the majority of them maybe went up to be with the 10 tribes. But uh, since they lived there, it would make sense that some of them probably stayed just because it was more convenient. Um now, uh, the uh, Pasuk that we're up to, uh, verse 25, Yeravim built up Shechem in the mountain of Ephraim and dwelled in it. And then he, he, he left there and built up Penuel. And uh, then it says, Yeravim, verse 26, Yeravim then thought, now the kingship may revert to the house of David. If this people will go up and bring offerings in the temple of Hashem in Jerusalem, the heart of this people will revert to their Lord, to Rehavim, king of Judah, and they will kill me and return to Rehavim, king of Yehuda. What was he so nervous of? So uh, the uh, Rashi brings over here that the only people who are allowed to sit down in the temple courtyard is the kings of of David, the kings from the, the from the kingdom of David, from the uh, Malchus Yehuda, Malchus Baruchus Beis David. Now, uh, Rehavam, we're going to be going there 
for the Hakel. Hakel is the year after Shemitah. And uh, last year was the year of Hakel. So the um, for the Hakel year, 